hi how's everyone doing so as usual I didn't um, give you enough notice for this one but um, I've got a funny story about today I was literally gone to, went to the shops <laughs> um, was on my way somewhere got lost turned down to this road and then looked across and I've seen this beautiful um, arbitorium in Warsaw which is near where I live and that's where I am now I've been here for the last um, half an hour and it's beautiful I mean I just want to show you a little bit um, it's literally this is just a snapshot of it but it's massive I mean I think it would take me a good few hours to walk around this place I will be coming back here bringing my nieces nephews but it's beautiful and because it's so tranquil and you've got um, you know there's a little bridge with a stream there's a massive lake there's all sorts I just thought do you know what <clears throat> I'm gonna spend a bit of time here relaxing uh, I do have work to do <laughs> so I'm gonna have to like go in a minute but in this video, what I want to talk about, let me just get on with the video, I suppose, is the five relationships that might never work. And if anyone does jump online, please give me your comments. Please talk about, contribute, you know what I mean? Say if these are things that you've experienced, say if you agree, disagree, whatever. Um, it's just for me. Sometimes it's nice to just jump on and do a live. So I'm going to talk about five relationships that I think will be difficult to um, work if they're not either, if you don't get the work put in or just sometimes it's, you just have to say this will never work. And the first one is if someone is in and out of prison a lot. Now you might think, well, um, that's obvious or you might think, well, that's not an issue, that's not a deal breaker. But what you ha hi whoever's online, what you have to think about is if someone is constantly in and out of prison, the first thing you've got to think about is where they are in their life at the moment. You know, is this person um, ready to settle down in another relationship? Because if they're still, you know, what it's called is a career criminal, if they're still kind of doing things that will impact on their relationship, especially if they've got children, I'm not making any judgments on anyone who um, is struggling and who, you know, commits a crime, that's another story. But if you're someone that's constantly going in and out of prison, you've got to understand that the, your partner who's left at home has to then take care of the home by themselves they also have to make a journey into an institution which they didn't ask to do because they have to come to visit you now I've worked um, not I've worked with young people and I've had to go and visit them in prison and I'll tell you what you know just one hour spent going all the searches you have to do um, the fact that you have to be in that environment for that amount of time you know you're there to do a job but to me it's not a pleasant experience so if you've got a partner who's constantly in and out of prison and you're having to travel down there to see him, you might even have to bring the kids with you, you have to go through that experience each time, then maybe it's time to say to that person, you know, you've got stuff you need to sort out or work on. I don't want to be with someone who's constantly in and out of prison, especially if they're at a certain age and you just can't see it ever ending. You know, they either get a buzz from um, the crime that they're committing, they either feel that that's the only lifestyle they can have, or they just, um, you know, institutionalised because some people are. They get so used to being in prison that when they're out, they don't know how to um, to behave because it just feels unnatural. So you have to make that decision. So that's the first one um, where I think it's a possibility that it might never work, no matter how much input's put in. If that person decides that they're going to continuously go in and out of prison, then um, for you, you might say, I can't be like this person who sits on the outside, waits for you to come out, then on edge for you because you might go back in again. The second one, I have made like a list, is if you're either in an abusive relationship, that's one that's more obvious because most people would say if you're in an abusive relationship for a long period of time, then at some point you're gonna just walk away and say this is never gonna work. The second part to it is if you're bickering all the time, you know when you see couples and you just think they don't like each other? You know, it's not a matter of their love, it's just they don't like each other because they're bickering. They're saying, what have you put that over there for? Why do, you, why do you walk like that? Literally, why are you breathing? Now, if you're in a relationship where you, haven't, it, you, you feel that that person is getting on your nerves to that point where you don't even like them, you can't stand looking at them, you just, everything about them, just, there's just nothing there, then you need to consider, well, you know, is it, is, is it, come, is it run its course? Has it come to the end? And it's a really brave and honest decision sometimes when you say, look, I can't be with this person anymore. It doesn't matter. Uh, the, whatever needs to be there is gone. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go for couples therapy because obviously I'm advocate of that as a therapist. But what I would say is if you know deep down that it doesn't matter what this person does, it doesn't matter how much therapy we have or it doesn't matter 
Um, he could bring me flowers every day, he could do everything I asked for, or she, um, but it's just never going to work because there's just something missing. Then just say it, you know, let each other go and let each other find someone who might be the right person for you, because um, you can't get the time back. The third one, which I think comes up a lot for people, is a deal breaker situation. So if you watch some of the reality TV programs I used to watch, I can't remember what it's called now, I wish I could, it was about a wrestling, um, some girls are in the WWE wrestling, and she, one of the girls, oh the Bella, the Bella twins, I really like them as well, those two, she um, is in a relationship with someone and he has clearly said he never wants to get married or have kids, that's what he said. She has, she has always said she wants kids and wants to get married. Now her family are continuously saying to her, this isn't going to work because you're um, sacrificing what you really want, you're suppressing it, you're going to re 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 um, resent him. She's willing to sacrifice that because she loves him. So you have to uh, make that decision, but if you have a deal breaker, so you want to get married, one of the things I feel that women do, or it could be men if they want to get married, but the woman says I'm not sure, is they go into the relationship with a deal breaker <clears throat> knowing that that other person doesn't want kids or doesn't want to get married or doesn't want what they want and then they say to themselves well he'll change his mind in a few years or um, I can convince him I can convince him now I'm not saying people don't change their mind but what you have to understand is if you've been with someone for say five years or more you still haven't got what you wanted when you came into that relationship. You were clear that you wanted kids, but he still hasn't budged on it. He's still nowhere near to saying yes, or it could be a, um, the man could want kids. You have to make a decision. Is this going to work, or do I have to sort of just accept that we don't want the same things? Do I have to accept that I can let go of what I first wanted, or is it a deal breaker? A deal breaker literally means that, that that's it. The, de the deal can't be done because I want this thing too much. So if you know deep down that it's something you truly want and you're not going to be satisfied until you get that, then maybe you need to say, well, this relationship isn't going to work. And it doesn't mean either of you are bad people. It doesn't mean either of you have done anything wrong to each other. It just means that maybe be honest with each other and say, I'm going to let you go and be with someone who wants the same things as you. So the fourth thing is a massive age gap. So let me know what you guys think about this. There's this is um, something that's subjective and what I mean by that is I feel that an age gap of 12 years, 12, 15 years or above isn't an issue in itself but you will have differing um, views really on life and that's because of your life experiences and that's all. You know, if you're 30 and you're dating a 45 year old, you know, your life is going to be different, your experiences, it doesn't mean it can't work but if things are impacting on your relationship because of the age so you're starting to realize as you both get older you just want different things you think completely differently your values are just different I mean that can happen regardless of age but I do think age gaps can have an impact on some relationships because I think it's about wisdom and growth and about journeys and I just think for me personally I wouldn't date someone who was 10 years older or younger than me purely because I just think who I was when I was 30 or 20 is completely different for who I am now and I can't see how that person can get into my like mindset and me into theirs. And the final one, um, let me know what you guys think on this as well, is if you this person doesn't get along with your children and doesn't get along with your in-laws. Now I've done a video separately about in-laws but I just want to say to people that if you think in a relationship that you can compartmentalise and say well I love her but not her kids or I love him but I don't have to see his mum, his mum gets on my nerves or it, that's not how life works because what I've found when people come for couples counselling or when they're just in a form of distress a lot of the time it's because they have to avoid um, going to family get-togethers or every interaction with the in-laws is like tense and it's horrible and you can't live like that L long term you cannot survive with your partner and not get along with their um, family so you have to make that decision am I going to make more efforts to get along with the family am I going to accept I don't get along but be civil but you can't have this tension and think that it's not going to impact on your partner either because he doesn't or she doesn't want to be in the middle 
they're going to always love their mum and their dad. So if you start criticising their mum and dad or you say, I'm not going to your mum and dad's at Christmas because I don't, can't stand them, then how do you think that's going to impact on you two? It will cause a division whether, whether he says that or not. And the children thing, I could do a whole video on that, but as a previous social worker, but also as a therapist, if you are involved with someone, whether that's your partner, husband, living together, whatever, and they do not respect or like your children, then there's a problem. And I think what I've found is a lot of people will make excuses and say, um, my children don't respect him um, as my husband, and therefore, you know, there's so many situations where children are even thrown out of the home or where the parent will side with their partner or their husband over the children. Now, that's a, not a judgment call. That's entirely up to you. But my view is that this is one of the key reasons why long-term relationships won't work because the children are a part of you and the ch you come as a package. So unless that person can accept the children, doesn't have to accept all of their behavior, doesn't have to accept you know, that maybe how that he gets taught to some of the time. But if your partner is saying to you outright, it's either the child or me, or talking to your children disrespectfully, or even in some cases abusing them, then that's a relationship that's not going to work really. Um, one, one or two things is going to happen. So I hope you found this video useful. Thank you whoever logged on earlier um, and got involved. As I said, this was really random. I just want to show you a little bit about where I am at the moment. As I said, it was I just decided to do this random live because um, I accidentally found this location and I'll be coming back with my nieces and nephews at some point. So I hope you've all had a good day. Leave your comments. Um, anyone watching on the replay, I'll leave all my information. This is obviously on my business page, NU Journeys Counselling. So you can find all my information there if you want to make a counselling inquiry. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you for watching. Bye.